Deacon, I'm so glad you could join us. This is an exciting time for you in your life and for our diocese, of course. And I'm so thrilled. We're, we're thrilled that you were gracious enough to spend your time with us and really dive deep into what you're thinking in this moment in your life <laughs> and what's happening. So we're really pleased. Thank you for coming up. Yeah, thanks for having me here. That's great. As you know, we have a bunch of questions for you. This is going to be off the cuff. They don't know watching this that this is the first time you're seeing these questions. So this yes. Is be, <laughs> yeah. This is going to be raw for you. And you're just kind of like, say it like it is. What's on your mind? What's in your heart? Well, let's start nice and easy. We want to know. I want to know, actually. This is more for me. As we approach your ordination, it's, you know, weeks away, not even at this point. Does it feel like it's speeding up or slowing down? What does that mean for you? I almost feel like it's it's slowing down uh, in a sense just in the last few weeks um, maybe because I've been so long in seven in seminary seven years there um, and now at now at this point I'm just I'm doing little things to prepare for ordination getting things organized um, lots of little jobs to take care of and people to contact and and those kinds of things it's just the practical uh, things to, to get ready um, but in these last few weeks, <laughs> it seems so short, but so long. I'm like, I, I'm just waiting. I'm waiting. I can't wait till I get there. I can't wait till it's till it's over, and I'm a priest, um, and I move on to to start in a parish and everything. Um, if you had to give kind of a name or word mm -hmm. to the, the kind of emotion that's going through you, what word would you pick? Well, it's. It, I'm excited, uh, very much so. But at the same time, it's it's kind of it's like an excitement with of this long, long waiting anticipation of of everything I've been working towards for for so long. Yeah. So excitement is the big word. For you. I think so. Yeah. I think that's a great word to use. It wasn't dreadful fear or anything like that. No, not yet. That that'll come in time. <laughs> Maybe right before you. All right. Yeah. So everyone wants to know about the moment that you knew. That you were called to this beautiful mm. vocation, but was it actually a moment, or was it a process? Was it a, a slow discovery? How would you explain? That? Yeah. So there wasn't like a specific watershed moment. I didn't have a vision. I were like, oh, you're now you become cool. a priest, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the direct line mm -hmm. <laughs> from heaven or anything. Um, but there was a point in time where where I knew they're like. I want to become a priest. There's nothing else. So really. You have to tell us about that. There was this point yeah. in time you said. This point in time, I think I was 12 or 13, really. Um, and I was sure that's, that's what I want to do. Um, how, that, how that came about and how I was so sure of that at that point in time. And that, that didn't really ever change. That hasn't ever really changed. So it wasn't so. anything that happened or anything that was said or a series of things or encounters? series of things well i mean just just living life living life uh as a catholic my family was always <clears throat> very devout um growing up like we went to daily mass very often we um <laughs> always prayed the rosary as a family whether i liked it or not uh, yeah 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 i think this is very consoling for a lot of young men because we kind of get this idea out there that no, if you're called to the priesthood, it'll be a moment. It'll be this right, exactly. flash of lightning. But yeah. actually, most of the time, it's just kind of like you grow into it. It's a part of you. Exactly. And it does happen. It happens both ways. Yeah. As many guys I've talked to in the seminary um, over time, or many of my classmates even, they had these moments where suddenly they knew like the path they were on. There was a sudden shift. They had some word or someone said something to them, mm -hmm. and they could pin it on a very specific moment. But then you also have these guys who just did simple things, like they went to Mass, or they were, they were serving at Mass, and they just, in that presence, in that, the, the way they lived their life, it became apparent to them over time. Yeah, beautiful. I love it. You've taken a lot of studies at the seminary. I mean, studies upon studies, few, courses yeah. upon <laughs> courses, readings upon readings. Looking back, was there a course or a field of study that you just... We won't talk about the ones you didn't want to go to. <laughs> Thank you. Well, what about the ones yeah. that really resonated with you and you, they really helped your faith life? Can you talk a little bit about that? What that was, what was... Yeah, like? yeah. Um, I would say I really enjoyed the... Um, what they call, I guess, systematic 
theology, um, which is the, you know, you learn about the theology of grace, the theology of, you know, salvation and eschatology, how, <laughs> what, our, what our end goal is, um, those kinds of things. And it's very, maybe because it's a little more, more ordered and precise, you're like, we've got lots of definitions, things are laid out very nicely. Um, but it kind of fit in with, with more of, uh, of how my mind works. And so, so I enjoyed that kind of thing, yeah. So when you would go to one of these classes, what was your experience often coming from those moments? Was it aha, like a lot of aha moments or kind of like, I need to remember that? What was going through? Yeah, m more like, I should probably remember that in the future, <laughs> like especially when it's moral theology or something, um, just, there's like some important things are like, I should remember that so that when somebody asks me that, and they will, <laughs> and they will. I know what uh, kind of what to say, where to go with that. Um, but also like a lot of stuff just was reinforcement and like expanding on stuff. I kind of like I already knew kind of from the formation I had growing up, from my time I spent at Seed of Wisdom College and the classes I took then, and just conversations with people and um, yeah, so really a lot of reinforcement and expanding. That's great. Um, That's great. It wasn't completely new to you and shocking. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. That's good. Looking back at your years of preparation to the priesthood, hmm. share one or two experiences that really impacted your perception of this beautiful vocation and on how you plan on living it. I mean, there must have been times in the seminary, conversations you had in the corridor or staying after to speak with a professor or maybe as you're out in the, the field, so to speak, at different parishes, mm -hmm. where certain things just kind of hit you a certain way. You weren't planning for it, but they just, you know in that moment maybe or after the fact that they, they molded what comes next. Right. Do you have any yeah. of those? I would say that um, on my internship year a few years ago. Now explain first, what is an internship year? Because I know there's a lot of people. Right, right. I don't know what that is. So <laughs> kind of in the... At our seminary at St. Augustine's, um, kind of in the middle of your theology studies, you take a, a break year, so to speak, and go, go out, go back to your diocese, go get assigned to a parish, and just assist with things around there to be under the, the mentorship of a, of a pastor, um, and just, just get your feet on the ground so you know, they make sure you know what, uh, what parish life is like, and what the life of a priest is like from would day to day. Would you select that pastor, or would a pastor be selected? That would be assigned, okay. yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay, very good. So, so they pick someone who ideally they think would be, would be a good mentorship for you. Excellent. Yeah. So just, just meeting some of these people, these individuals, these families, um, who are really like, intent on living um, their faith life, their life in Christ, and that, like seeing them and seeing the happiness with which they did this, um, was that's what I found inspiring. And that's something I really was able to take back with me uh, in the following years mm -hmm. at the seminary. And were you able to hold on to that even as you're studying and things are getting crazy again with, with school and seminary? Absolutely. Um, so whenever there would be a lot of assignments um, or different things going on, lots of things to, to do and go to at the seminary. That's happened sometimes. Um, if, I feel, if I ever felt swamped or anything, I'd be able to, to go back and that would be a place where like, okay, I can, I can remember now <laughs> what I'm doing, where I'm going, the people that, that I'm going to serve. And that was always a, a great place of comfort for me, consolation, so. It, it offers you that big why that sometimes we lose sight of in our vocations, whether we're married or consecrated life, whatever it is, kind of when we're hitting the hard days, exactly. the long nights, yeah. and going, oh, this is the why. That, that's wonderful that you found that in a, a family right there in a parent. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's very inspiring for others watching it, how we help our priests as well, just by living our own faith and uh, yeah. stepping up to the plate. Would you agree that's the... Uh, absolutely, absolutely. I think that, that really makes a difference and really... Um, encourages priests to, to keep doing um, keep doing the work uh, to keep uh, reaching out to people and and really putting the effort into to their priestly life excellent, excellent. let's go on to the next one 
recently, from what I understand, you had the pleasure, I hope it was a pleasure, yeah. of seeing your friends, your classmates become ordained. To, yes. To the priest. Yeah. Tell us about that, what that was like for you. That must have been surreal. It that is. Been, it is. I don't know. What would that feel like? It's almost, yeah, it feels surreal. And I'm still, even now, um, haven't quite, <laughs> it hasn't quite settled in as reality that all these, these classmates, these friends of mine are all priests now. And that's, that's it. That's the end. Well, it's not the end, but it's the, it's the end of our, of our life in the seminary together. And um, everything, like everything we're working at, everything we're studying for, praying for. Um, but at the same time, it was it was amazing. I I was able to to serve as a deacon at many of those at those ordinations and first masses and things, um, and it was a great experience to to see them celebrate mass and and you know have the hands laid upon their head, <laughs> the ordination, the oil in the hands. Um, yeah, it's a great great moments, profound moments. I don't know if you're more of an emotional guy, but did you find yourself in those moments kind of thinking, if I was a crier, I'd be crying right now. This is beautiful. Yeah, I am I don't tend to be emotional, no. So I wasn't close to crying in those moments, but I was I was proud yeah. of, of yeah. where, um, of what was going on and what they're having and very happy for them uh, in the moment. Would you, would you describe it as kind of the, the closure of a stage or part of the journey? Like we're, we're through that part and there's a whole other stage that's coming. There's a whole other long road ahead of us as brother priest, but at least exactly. Yeah. Behind us. Yeah, I would, absolutely. Um, I'd say we, we've been in the incubator for a number of years now and we're out and we're done and it's hard to believe. Um, but now, now we're out there and we're, we're moving on and yeah, I mean, that's, there's so much to look forward to at the same time. Like, there's, you know, there's ups and downs, there's challenges, obviously, but um, this, is, this is the life we, we signed up for and the life we, we've been called to, so. Beautiful. Beautiful. I want to put this one to you. With every new ordination, as it is with every vocation, of course, the church once again receives a fresh perspective on the realities lived. I mean, not the teaching, of course, we know mm -hmm. what it is and it's beautiful and we love it. But you're going out in the world with fresh eyes as a priest. Tell us about that perspective. What is the church and the spirit saying to you about your task in the world, about what mm -hmm. the church needs to do, especially here in the Diocese of Pembroke? Um, tell us about that freshness of the gospel coming to the church through you. Yeah. I mean, obviously, um, we live in a time of, of a lot of turmoil. There's a lot of things going on, a lot of parties opposed to each other and, and um, opposing opinions and lots of clashes in society uh, and all over the place and very serious ones. Um, uh, great, great moral evils that are going on in, in the country right now um, and in our own area as well. Uh, but at the same time, I think there's, there's a great hope moving forward. Because um, despite, you know, the church is, is not in the best shape in Canada um, overall and you know lots of these existing structures are shifting and you know trying to struggling to to keep people uh, living their life of faith and to pass on the faith um, but moving forward like with lots of people I've met who are outside of kind of our circle of, of practice of faith um, there's a great, there's a desire there. And when, when I see that desire, like I know they want something and I think I know what the answer is. Yeah. It's a matter of, of getting to them, of, of letting them see that what they want mm -hmm. is in the church and we can offer that to them. Um, those, those things, uh, what they call the, the transcendentals, those things that everybody desires that everybody can see. That's kind of that idea of, of beauty, of truth, of goodness. Um, those are the things that people long for and, the, and that they desire and that they're searching for wherever, wherever that might take them. And it often goes down the, the wrong path and they find the wrong things thinking it'll make them, it'll make them happy and that they found these things. Um, but I think going back to those, those basic elements 
um, of, of the beauty you can see and the truth that you know uh, and the goodness that you experience from people around you. Um, showing them that and showing them that the church, the church has that, that the life in Christ and with Christ can, can give that to them and they can become part of that and they can, you know, expand and, and show that life to, to other people around them. And you weren't kidding. I mean, that, that's hopeful. That's exciting. That means that the, our field around us is, that is mission field. I mean, Canada is exactly. a, a mission field. We can go with them with the very things that they need, which is so exciting. And you feel in an intimate way that your priesthood is a part of that. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's been a large part of, uh, of my, my own drive, my own desire to, to be a priest and, um, my studies in the seminary and and going through all these years um, of formation to yeah to almost get back to the basics and get down to to what people really desire and what they want um, and to to show them <laughs> where yeah. where the stuff lies that they that they desire deep down and you know and call them to to conversion to that life in Christ and to follow Christ really uh, where he leads. Yeah. We know you're thirsty, the living waters are this way. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. Deacon, I, I know your, your time is short, you have so much going on right now. Speak to the young men of our diocese, those who think that maybe they're, they're hearing the inkling of God's voice, something's happening, maybe there's a call there, that they should explore this beautiful thing called the priesthood. What would you say to them? I would say just go for it. And I know that that sounds cliche, um, but if this is something that you think is a possibility, that, that you want to discern, that you want to, to pray about, um, do it, do it and go for it and look at, um, look at where this, this can take you. Uh, there's, there's lots of steps to proper discernment, of course. So you've got to, you know, talk to priests and talk to someone who can advise you uh, about moving forward with this. But this is a life, it, it's a vocation to service. It's a vocation to, to love of the church, to love of Christ. And it is something I believe is, is very worthwhile. Um, and extremely <laughs> fulfilling on the personal level just because of everything that it entails. And so I would say, go for it, do it, um, pray hard and, and think hard about it, but don't be afraid to, to go and, and take that shot in the dark. Don't be afraid, I love it. Uh, speaking about fear, we're probably moments away from you walking down. <laughs> and yeah. Ordain yourself. The, the church is full of people who have been rooting for you, praying for you. In some way, shape, or another, they feel like your journey is a part of their journey. Um, speak to them now. What do you want to say? You may not see them after the mm -hmm. ceremony. Maybe you people have to run. Whatever it is, what do they need to hear from you um, after all this time? Yeah. culminating in this moment. I, I just want to say thank you all so much for, for all your prayers, for all your support over the last number of years. I know even, even when I've been away in Toronto for so long that it has, it has got me through many a tough time and it has been uh, the rock on which I was al always able to rest. Uh, your support has, has done everything for me and your prayers um, and I know will continue uh, as I move on uh, into my life as a priest. Um, and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for, for all of that. Deacon, thank you so much for your time, for all that you're doing for the church. Uh, we're very excited to, uh, to see what you're going to do in, in the Lord the next couple of years, because I know that he has that fire under you. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. God bless.